Um, could you tell us your names? Uh, my name is Spencer Bentley. Okay, and I'm Ed Miller. I'm a former coach at Notre Dame High School, 10 years and uh, 20 years at Wheelersburg High School. And where are you? Uh, where do you live around here? I live at Haverhill, Ohio. And I'm in Wheelersburg, on Miller Road, named after my grandfather. <laughs> yeah. All right, and I know you came down today to talk a little about the American Red Cross. So, what do you know about the American Red Cross? Well, I know every time we have our catastrophe, uh, the Red Cross is there. You know, if it's a, t a tornado or a hurricane, and uh, they do big things and they do little things. Uh, I know a couple years ago at the Red Cross banquet, the guy was there that was the last person to get off of the plane that went down in the, um, she was the river, Hudson. Yes. And uh, he talked about the Red Cross was there and gave him a sweatsuit and a towel. Or not a sweatsuit and a blanket. And that was a little thing, but it was really big if you got wet, wet clothes. And um, they also do a, a great job teaching uh, first aid and, uh, and um, CPR uh, through the um, <clears throat> Red Cross uh, while I was at Wheelersburg. It's been 40 years ago. I uh, taught CPR to my classes and uh, I got, got my uh, instructors and uh, we would put close to 100 students through each year and certify them. And uh, back then we had uh, Mrs. Bowe who is deceased now. She would come and help me test with a few of the other Red Cross people. So um, we feel that we, uh, you know, got a lot of people certified through the Red Cross, and they were so supportive. And anything I would need, why well, they'd be right there with them. Um, why do you think it's important for a person to know first aid and CPR? Okay, um, first of all, it just makes you feel uh, more comfortable around your family outings or when you're out in public. Uh, you know, you just uh, know that if a, a situation comes about, you're going to be able to step up and do something about it. And uh, it's just very satisfying to know that. Yeah, I think I think every mother should know that that has little kids. You never know when something's going to happen, and you're the one with them, and you're the one that has to do something. So, uh, when and why did you get trained for CPR and first aid? Well. You know, like I mentioned, the reason I first of all as a coach, you know, you're around players and accidents happen, and so I wanted it for that reason. But also, I taught health and PE, and um, I wanted to pass it on to the, my students. And by by getting my instructors, so I I felt that I was very qualified. And believe me, I in demonstrating, I got a lot of practice. And so I knew that, hey, I would be ready if, if the time come about. Okay, I got mine in the 60s at Eastern Kentucky University. And I, I took a life-saving class because I wanted to guard in the summer to be a lifeguard. And so that's how I got my CPR. Okay, now um, could you tell us the story of how you two were able to um, save the life of Jerry Bentley? Okay, I, uh, we were uh, working out and my husband came out of the locker room. He said, let's go, I'm done. I said, okay, let's go to the grocery. And I was right behind him and he got up against the wall and slid down the wall right at my feet. And so I got down there and I knew well, he wasn't breathing to start with. So I hollered out and then Ed came over. So very quickly we started CPR on him. And uh, we worked for a pretty long time doing Ed. Yes, um, I was way in the back of the room, so when I heard her yelling for some help, well, I hustled myself up there as quickly as possible, and we kind of assessed the situation, and, and uh, Jerry was laying on his back, or on his side at that time, and so, um, you know, we were checked for the uh, breathing, and we knew that it was serious very quickly, because he was already starting to turn blue, and so we got him on his back, and uh, I said, well, you know, I'll do the compressions because I, I had good technique and I want to make sure I got the proper depth. And uh, in doing that, I think I fractured Jerry's rib, but that's <laughs> this part of the game. <laughs> and and uh, 
Spencer, she did the ventilations, but probably the amusing part was when he, after he recovered at the hospital, and you know, really, uh, the um, our emergency squad had just gone out on another call, so they were a little slow getting there. So I don't know. We were probably doing uh, the uh, CPR probably. I think 10 minutes seemed like 10, 15, probably longer because several times she said, have you called 911? <laughs> anyway, the, the humorous part about it was uh, after, uh, you know, we got our job done and it was such a relief to see them show up and put the stimulators on and we could step, step back, but it was a very uh, emotional thing too. But uh, when he got, when he come to at the hospital, uh, Spencer said, uh, you know, Ed, uh, I mean, uh, Jerry, um, <clears throat> Ed did the uh, ventilations and I did the compressions. <laughs> and he said, oh, shit. <laughs> but anyway, we worked pretty good as a team because, uh, you know, I was reminding her as I was doing the compressions, hey, keep that airway open, mm -hmm. get that chin up in the air. He was kind of like and, a drill sergeant. Yeah, I sounded like a drill sergeant. <laughs> and I thought she might reach over and smack me. But anyway, I thought we team, we worked pretty good as a team. And boy, she got the breath of air right in there, and, and I'd continue on. And even when somebody showed up from the fire department, I just felt I had a good rhythm. And I said, you know, I'll just continue on until the uh, MS gets here. And they got there and they shocked him five yeah. times yeah. and then took him to the hospital and he pulled through but it was it was rough but i really think that by starting early so, so quick and getting the circulation to his brain i think by the time that they got there he would have you know four or five minutes or more would have elapsed probably 10 he'd been he'd been brain dead and uh i really you know I bet we started what thirty seconds. You think? After oh we yeah, there? it was quick. quick. It was quick because you you're the one just barked out. Hey, he's turning blue, <laughs> and I don't. And, and I was checking his pulse. I couldn't see him feel no pulse, and uh, we couldn't feel any breathing. And we said, "Hey, it's time to take action." Yeah. Uh, and how did that make you feel to be able to do that? Well, at the moment, I was in shock. <laughs> <laughs> she was praying. <laughs> <laughs> but after it was all over, I was just glad that I knew what I knew and I could do it. Yeah. yeah. It's a great feeling of satisfaction is that you can do something for a friend and, uh, you know, save somebody's life. It's a tremendous amount of satisfaction in that. Um, would you suggest that everyone should know how to administer CPR or first aid? even if it's not their job? Yes, I think so. And, you know, have the uh, courage to step up and take action. There's a lot of people that know, but they get in public or there's some place and they don't want to step up and do the job. And you've got to have a little backbone courage about you to, to go ahead and do it. And the main thing, you know, if you just do the, uh, the compressions and keep the airway open, you wouldn't necessarily understand do the ventilations, but I think it's if you can do the ventilations too, it's good. Um, I know you mentioned that you had taught your students for a number of years. Um, do you ever get to cross paths with them, or? Um, yes, I have um, talked to several of them over the years because being a football coach, a lot of them comes back where they'll have their a reunion for a certain class and there's been many of them that has used it in their uh, um, line of business and uh, you know they're very appreciative that they were certified and we made sure that they did it correctly and Mary Bowe was a stickler <laughs> and the people she brought and that's the reason I didn't want to certify myself I wanted somebody from the Red Cross to be there and make sure that their uh, techniques were perfect and uh, so yes I've met a lot of them over the years that said they certainly appreciated getting certified and they had occasions to use it in their own families mainly with their children they probably do more obstructed airway than they do CPR but there's been a few of them that has worked in uh, businesses or where they've been around offices and, and have been called on to do it. I don't know if we talked about this, but 
Ed and I have known CPR for years, and this was the first time we had ever used it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'd done an obstructed airway on grandchildren a couple, but I was never in position to do the CPR, even though all those years I've been in for 40 years. But we were at the right place at the right time. And if it had been five minutes later, we'd been in the car. So even though it was bad, it could have always been worse. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been tough if you had been driving up the highway. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's pretty much... Our story. Uh, that's our story. <laughs> and, we're, and we're sticking to it. <laughs> and we're sticking to it. <laughs> Um, before I, I turn you loose and let you go, is there anything that um, you would want to encourage people to do or um, uh, that you think people should know about this? Well, I would like to take a refresher course and to use the, what's the thing on the wall, the defibrillator. I'd like a lesson on that. I know they say that you can just take one and read the instructions, but if you're in a traumatic situation, sometimes you you're not able to read and <laughs> so I, I would like to take a refresher course. And I picked up a book and gave myself a refresher not too long ago. <laughs> because they come in and they corrected me. We were doing 15-2 and the gal corrected me and I said I'm sorry I'm old school <laughs> but it's working. <laughs> Remember, lots of different people are going to be able to watch this. So, if you have any, um, would you like to encourage anybody to to learn how to do? I encourage well, everybody to learn. Everybody I've talked to, and my family members. I, you know, I have seven children and eighteen grandchildren. So, at the pool side, uh, last summer we re did a general review, and uh, every once in a while they'll say, "Can I have your book?" And I'll <laughs> Here it is, this review. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really interesting that you, do you work with the young kids too, with it, to teach them how to do it, or just well, the adults? You know, just, just my grand, mainly just the adults, but I have a lot of adult grandchildren too. Mm -hmm. So? Well, we're done. Thank All you. right. <laughs> <laughs>